Oh, right. Hi, Rob. It's Friday. It's Friday. We made it. Five we day did. challenge. Day number five. Right. I hope everybody had a great time. It was good fun. It's good fun. Well, I've had a fun week being here with you and uh, we've got lots of good responses. People seem like they were enjoying their time over these past five days. And uh, I think it's been an eye opener for a lot of people. Oh, it has too. I made some new friends. People have been chatting me up and talking to me. So it's been good. I like it. And I learn lots. I learn lots. Yeah. And that's what it's about, right? Learning like, uh, you know, if you're not growing, you're dead. Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. well, you Pretty are. So we, need, <laughs> <laughs> we need to grow. We need to be learning, you know, and that activates our mind that, and it stimulates us. And this is what I hope this week has been for so many people. That's right. Getting healthy in a different way. Yes, we want to talk about what, what do we get out of the course, right? You're going to go into that later and get people to post up and stuff. For me, it's all about finding a new way to get healthy and enjoy enjoy the process of getting healthy. And I, that's what I liked about the course and everything that's going on and why I continue on. Hmm. So to enjoy getting healthy. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't have to be that arbitrist, like, oh, I got to eat this certain food. Oh, life sucks kind of thing. I got to get up and exercise. I don't want to, but... No. it can be a you know a fun kind of get up have a little dance learn something new try some even just going for a walk and reading some Marcus Aurelius or whatever or whatever motivates you that little bit of time in the morning get yourself thinking on a positive stuff just that alone is is going to start changing your health wonderful so tell us Rob so day five for you so what are your final uh checks on your checklist today well I was looking at on, on number one on the checklist and it was like self-talk, talk to yourself. What are your goals? What do you do? And I thought, what are my goals? What have I been trying to accomplish? And I have some work to accomplish some personal things. And I thought, well, it's good to have goals because you can't accomplish anything unless you set a goal, but then you have to have a plan, you know? So I started thinking, well, what are my plans? You know, they're sort of scattered. I have this plan. I have that plan and all these big plans but what is the actual plan that I'm incrementally working at each day? And, and can, is there a way to measure it at the end of the day? So my goal now is to put my ideas and my thoughts and what I'm going to do moving forward into a plan that I can actually look at each day and say, have I accomplished something towards where I'm trying to get to? And that's, that's my self-talk for myself about making sure that I can uh, get to where I want to be. Well, it's wonderful. You know, without a plan there, without action steps, things don't happen. We can dream and we can talk all we want about getting healthy. And I wish I was this and I wish I felt this way and looked this way. But until you actually get in there and do the work and say, this is step one, this is step two, this is step three. 100%. Like it. Love it. Bingo. Number two, what do I got? Uh, this one always throws me off the pairing, the nervous system. You'll talk about the technical terms for all that stuff. But what I got out of it was the slowing your breathing. So when I'm exercising or on my bike, which I started doing now, riding this bike, sort of multitasking, as we talked about yesterday, watching my whatever it is on TV that lifts me up, some kind of motivational talk or reading, doing my bike. Now I'm concentrating on my breathing as I'm going to, is it slow? Is it fast? How is it controlled? And, and working on that as well. Yeah. So, you know, the breath is that form of you mentioned autonomic pairing, but when we activate the breath and pay attention, in particular, when we slow the breath, we activate our parasympathetic nervous system. There's so, a word I was looking for. Yeah. Yeah. So our body has stress, our, our, our you know, fight or flight system, and then mm -hmm. it has rest and digest and heal. Those are our two systems, right? So if we take time to breathe, then we're focusing on resting, digesting, and healing. And when we, and it's as simple as literally taking those three or four just deep breaths, pausing throughout the day, pausing before your meal, pausing before you have a conversation with someone. And in that little bit of time, you can engage the parasympathetic nervous system. Your mind is going to get more clear. You're going to eat easy. Your digestive system is going to work better and your health is going to be better overall. Awesome. Well, sounds good to me. I like it. Uh, Fresh fiber. So I, for that, I've been uh, eating tons of vegetables. I actually, uh, I, I found with my diet, with what I'm doing, I'm I, I finding it hard to find things to eat. 
<laughs> which is funny. The healthy things to eat and, and coming down to you with, I thought, oh, there'd be all kinds of it. But for me, I find it hard to actually find stuff to eat, and not repeat the same kind of meal every night, try to make it a little different. So uh, for fiber, I don't know. I'm, I'm eating lots of vegetables. Is there a particular vegetable that's better for you than others for fiber or? Most vegetables that grow above the ground tend to have more fiber than vegetables that grow under the ground. Meaning, what do you mean by above the ground? Like the roots grow, like the leaves grow above the ground from the vegetable? Right, well, the, the vegetable itself grows above the ground. So if you th think of, you know, broccoli versus a potato. So okay. broccoli has more uh, fiber than a potato is. So, so carrots probably not all that good for you for fiber because it grows under the ground. That's right. They have less fiber, but they're still, of course, they're vegetables. Vegetables are good for us. Okay. Um, but when we really want to add that extra amount of fiber, then, above you know, the, the ground, that's good. Above the ground. Yeah. See, these are little just things that if I write down above the ground, vegetables, yeah. fiber makes it simple. I like it. Yeah. So think about, you know, again, you know, tomatoes, potatoes, peppers, all kinds of your greens that you have, uh, you know, squash, um, what else do we what have? about cabbage? I started eating cabbage yesterday. Okay. Well, <laughs> Don't ask me. If I read somewhere a UFC fighter said it was good for you. So I thought I'll try it. Out. Why not? I need to throw something different on this plate. Cabbage is wonderful. So everything from that category. So that's kind of the cruciferous vegetable category. They all tend to have quite a bit of fiber. So cabbage, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cauliflower, collard greens. Cruciferous. I like this word. Cruciferous. Yeah. Wow. So those veggies, they have high amounts of sulforaphane and sulforaphane is an anti-cancer substance that's basically present in vegetables. Um, the highest source of sulforaphane is in something called broccoli sprouts. Oh. So sprouting is something that I really love to do. Uh, actually, maybe I should tell people about sprouting um, because you can make sprouts at home simply in a mason jar, you know, four or five days, you can get these amazing sprouts. Uh, inexpensive, good for us, have a high amount of fiber because you're taking a seed from its baby form and you're getting it in its first five to seven days of its life. Um, but in that category of cruciferous vegetables, that's why we kind of hear that they're good for, you know, they're good for heart, they're for digestion, you're, they're for your liver, uh, but they have those anti-cancer uh, substances in them as well. Which is why, you know, when it comes to, when I posted on the first day, remember that sheet that had all the colors of the rainbow? If we really focus on those veggies and each day, you know, you said you get bored. Well, maybe put that chart on your fridge and think about, okay, I want to pick something from the orange category and the red category that I didn't try before. So that can kind of liven your menu up a little bit as well. Sounds good. Yeah. I like it. All right. So that'll help me with the fiber stuff. You should post this stuff up. I'm trying my best. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess, well, if I go into the next course or whatever you're doing next, maybe I'll find out some more of the stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so the last one, of course, and we ended the whole week on this. And uh, obviously I did a video and uh, I see that you stepped up and you added your video in as well. And a handstand through in a handstand to boot. Wow. I ain't going there, doc. Sorry. But uh, that was pretty good. That's pretty good. I got to say you stepped up to the challenge, showed some movement, had some fun. The girls look like they were having a great time there. So two thumbs up. That was awesome. Thank you. It was, it was a lot of fun. And it's all about, again, it's all about the creative process, right? Because when we were practicing for this little dance, we had so much laughs, you know, we had falls and everything else. And especially from a handstand. Um, and I got fit along the way, you know, the final result is simply that you guys get to watch a video and hopefully have a few good laughs. But really, it was all about making it for everybody uh, because it was just such a blast. And, you know, all the things that we talk about for joyful movement, you know, joy, um, things, some things are easy on the bones. Like, you know, the dancing was easy for sure. The handstand, I was pushing myself a little bit, but it was just me and gravity. How hard should me and gravity be? You know? <laughs> um, but we really had lots of fun with it and, and just spending time with others. You know, when we think about movement, you know, going for a walk with friends, you know, in Miramichi, I think one of the greatest things people can do is walk French Fork Cove. It is absolutely free, right? Um, in Bermuda, I would say our equivalent is walking the beaches. You can walk from Warwick Long Bay to Horseshoe Bay. Absolutely clear crystal blue, blue water that you get to see along the way. And they're free. And then you bring a friend along, you share a few stories, 
And this is what it's like. So those are the things that can, can get us wanting to have joyful movement every single day. Yeah. That's awesome. No, that's great. I and you know, complaints. I didn't everything about it is awesome. I had fun <laughs> with this whole thing. And I guess I got one more day, the five day challenge turns out I'm going to be here a six day tomorrow. You're going to go through uh, some steps, how to win some prizes and all the things and talk about all the great stuff people have learned along the way and how to continue on and their health journey. Right. And so this is it. It doesn't end. This is our beginning. That's those little steps. Like you said, action step number one. So the first step was to complete your five-day challenge. So what's next? Get your prizes. Okay. So um, people have been asking about the prizes. So in order to get a prize, there are two ways to put your name in for the draw. You either can email me, uh, Dr. Keenan at mev2.ca, and I'll post that. Or what people can do is I'm going to put a post up. And all they simply need to do is underneath that post, they have to put their greatest takeaway from the challenge. Because yes, I wanted you to keep score. I did. I wanted you to have those little check boxes every day. But at the end of the day, those check boxes were for you. Okay. The check boxes weren't for me. So if you got, if you did five things every day, if you got 25, if you got a hundred, that score is all about your own personal progress. It's something that you could look at. If your weight loss, you know, we, we talked that this was, yes, a five pound challenge. And if you've lost three pounds, if you've lost four, if you've lost eight pounds, that's wonderful. And, but what I wanna hear is from, when I put the post up and how you can get the prize is just tell me your greatest takeaway from this week. What was it? Was it one of the tips you heard? Uh, was it something that you discovered about yourself? What is it that you're going to be able to do kind of moving forward that's going to be what's motivated you the grace, the greatest during these five days. And so then, awesome. so tomorrow at noon, uh, we are going to go live, Rob. And yeah. so every, everyone has until midnight tonight to put their post up about their greatest takeaway or to send an email. And then tomorrow morning, I'm going to type this all into the magical computer system and it's going to generate me the people that have won our five prizes. And if you remember, I had some really cool stuff. So we had the Himalayan salt lamp, which I love. And it's such a beautiful light. It's got, you know, it's low, very dim at night. So when we're working on our sleep activity, we had the journal, which is where people can express themselves, whether it's through loving kindness, if it's through their positive self-talk or gratitude that they're writing. Then we have a uh, water bottle, so that's going to help them when they want to hydrate. Then we had a coffee. So for people that we had the mushroom coffee. So, you know, the chaga mushrooms and uh, ashwagandha and things. So someone's going to get to win that. And then the last one was just a $25 gift certificate at Amazon. So then they can go online and order whatever it is that they think will help contribute to, uh, to their health. And there's okay. also a way that they can win a free month with you or something, right? Right. So that's a surprise, Rob. Oh, sorry. It's a surprise. Sorry. So, so stay tuned, everybody. So I want you to submit your responses tomorrow for those that show up or for those that will watch the replay. You're going to learn about how you can have one month free working with me and a personal one on one coach. Wow. No, not quite personal, but working with you and I. And following a little bit more along Rob's journey. Okay. So we're going to be starting a program called Dr. Tiffany's Family. And this is all about having you join me as we start to share our health knowledge together. Um, during this, this is going to be an ongoing monthly subscription service. Uh, and for the month of November, those of you that are going to be, that have been here and that can show up tomorrow are going to get a special code so that you can get the month for free. It will be a session that's gonna be held every Wednesday night. And what we're gonna start with is just the basics. So we're gonna go through, Rob is gonna, he's volunteered for us to continue talking about his journey. And the reason that I've done that is because I think when we hear someone's story, often it resonates really well with us. And so tomorrow I'll describe the next steps of that journey, what that's gonna look like. I'm it's, getting nervous now though. It's gonna be fun. It will be fun. It's always it's fun. And we're helping others. This is what this is about. This is service. You know, you're, no, you're, this you know. is all about helping me. <laughs> this whole thing is about me. So everybody knows anytime I help somebody else it makes me feel good. 
lifts my spirits, makes my day better. Service to others is the way to, to fix your health. So we'll learn about it. And it's so true. And But to serve others, we need to fill our cup. And someone That's had true. said this to me a few years ago, is that you know when our cup is full, when we're feeling good, when we're lively, when we have energy, uh, when we're free of illness, then whatever is overflowing from that cup then that's the energy that we have to give others. So this is what you want to do is you want to fill your cup out and then it will overflow to everyone that's around. My cup runneth over. Yeah. I it like does it. with joy. So to, so to stay tuned. So tomorrow is going to be a different session, everybody. Okay. So tomorrow is a live zoom with all of you. Okay. So I've posted a zoom link. It should be showing up in the next hour on the Facebook page and also in the weekly newsletter, the Zoom link is there. And I'll send out a reminder again tomorrow morning. It is Zoom. So I want to see all of your beautiful faces, okay? I want to see you all there tomorrow. Um, for this one, I will record it. And I will post it up again uh, during the Facebook Live. But when we're going to do it tomorrow, it's going to be for those of us that are in the Zoom. If you don't want to have your face on Zoom, that's fine. You can keep your camera shut off. Um, but Rob and I will be there and we just want to hear a few of your stories if anybody wants to share once we go um, and draw for the prizes. That'll be awesome. I'm looking forward to that, actually. I get to see some of the faces of people that actually talk and chat. And that would be, I can't wait for that. Great. So thanks again, Rob. Uh, our five days are coming to a close. Everyone get your checklist out. Remember, think about your biggest takeaway and, uh, and Rob, if you can just tell us one more time your biggest takeaway from this five-day challenge for yourself. Well, when I started trying to get healthy, I realized I was taking a lot of medicine. Everything was formed into a pill. And actually, uh, between the COVID and the vaccines and all the talk on TV about so much stuff going into people's bodies, I thought, you know, what they do in the old days? They used to get healthy plants and vegetables and hard work. There's there's got to be something, another way to do this besides always taking a pill for everything. Every time I turn around, I got a pill for some pill for an eye, pill for heart, pill for cholesterol, pill for this, pill for that. So that'll be part of the journey, actually. Do I need these pills? How do I eliminate these pills? And how do I replace it with a healthy lifestyle? So for me, that's what it was about. And I got out of this mentally. I can live my life in a better way, which gets me to a physical better way. Thank you so much, Rob. Thanks for being here. Thanks for sharing. I know your story has been inspiring to so many people that have listened in this week. Well, thanks to everybody. Bye. See you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> have a great day. Thanks again. Bye. Bye.